Welcome back to Left Brain Artist. Uh, today we have the second episode of a multi-part series for beginner acrylic pourers. Um, this episode is going to be about the supplies used for acrylic paint pouring and a little bit about pouring mediums. If you haven't already, uh, please watch the first episode where we talk about a little bit about the history of acrylic paint pouring and the science behind that and you can see that in I'll link that in the video above and in the description below. So as I was preparing for this, I realized that over the last couple of years, I've accumulated a lot of stuff via, uh, for the experimentation that I was doing. And uh, beginner acrylic paint pouring, really you don't need all that stuff. So we're gonna break this video into three different episodes. First one's going to have the basics that you see here for acrylic paint pouring. The second one is going to be a more extensive where I look at all of the other stuff that I have accumulated that it's been useful for acrylic paint pouring. And the last episode I'm going to give a couple of um, secret uh, tips and tricks that I've found to make everything easier. So uh, first things first, this right here is the basics that you need for acrylic paint pouring. A lot of people are going to have some or most of this at home already. Um, so to start out with, you need something to, um, to cover your painting surface with so you don't get paint everywhere. This is just plastic sheeting that I bought, uh, plastic draw cloths that I bought from uh, Lowe's. Uh, I bought them in bulk, but it's very cheap. So this is what you see on my table. I like this because when the paint dries on this, I can peel it off easy, and I like to use those skins for other things, and it's very cheap uh, and economical and it can be reused. Uh, the second thing you need obviously is paint. Uh, for beginners I recommend you go with uh, a craft paint like Apple Barrel, um, Deco Art, I have Metallic, Folk Art, Craft Smart. These are all brands that you can get at Walmart or at Michaels or other hobby stores. These will work just fine for acrylic paint pouring. They're relatively cheap. Um, most of these cost me less than a dollar. The Metallics are uh, closer to $1.50, $2, depending on when you buy it. And um, each one of these will do a couple of paintings a piece, depending on how big that painting is. Uh, the next thing we need is a little bit of water um, to mix. This paint isn't quite uh, liquid enough, so we need to uh, add a little bit of water to make it liquid enough to do the type of pouring that we want to do. You need a container. We have these little Dixie cups that I purchased. They're they're paper cups. These will work just fine. If you're working with your paints for a long period of time, they are paper, so it will break down. Or if you're a very vigorous um, mixer, I have popped holes in the bottom or in the sides because I was mixing too hard. But again, this is very cheap. It's easy to get. You can get uh, a couple hundred for a few dollars, and they will last a long time. Uh, the next thing you need is something to stir with. I just buy craft sticks or popsicle sticks. Very cheap. Again, you can get these at the dollar store. Um, these can be reused when the paint dries. Um, I just peel off any excess that I have and I can reuse those. I have one here that has a lot of white on it. I just let it dry, peel the excess off, and, and reuse those until I can't anymore. Uh, you need a painting surface. This is a canvas board. Uh, you can use wood from home. I have done that before. Um, the nice thing about this is it's pre-gessoed, um, so you don't really have to add a base, base layer, which is the gesso that we'll talk about in a minute also. And they're relatively cheap. Also, you can get a bunch of these for a couple dollars at Walmart uh, or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any place like that. Last but not least, that an item that's essential is you need a level. If your work isn't level when you pour the paint on, what's going to happen is it's going to gradually slide off whatever part is not level. And if you had a beautiful painting to start out with, it wasn't level, you'll have a not as beautiful, generally, sometimes it looks better, but not as beautiful painting. Get these at the dollar store. You just want to make sure you're leveling both sections of your paint. And that's about it. You can use the cups to prop up your painting. Um, also, just put four cups down, prop it up. Uh, and you can start acrylic paint pouring with these uh, basic materials. So next, uh, we're going to move these off, and we're going to talk about some of the more advanced items 
that come in with acrylic paint pouring. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about paint. Uh, I had my uh, craft paints out here. These will work great. I used these for the first few months I was doing things. Um, some of the other paints that I found are Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. There's lots of different types of flow acrylic. These are more liquidy. You can kind of see that through. They tend to need less water added and will work great with uh, paint pouring. There's also many different kinds of uh, beginner, uh, they call this academic level paints, uh, Master's Touch, Liquitex Basics, Artist Loft that's sold at Michael's. All of these will work. Uh, I honestly recommend these type of paints um, because they get a little, they have more um, pigment in the paint. Um, they do cost a little bit more, but sometimes you have to use less paint. Usually I do one part paint, two parts pouring medium for these, where these are one part paint, one part pouring medium, depending on how uh, level you want to get there. The other thing about paints is there are uh, artist level or professional level paints. Um, I actually don't recommend these at all because they're very expensive and they don't um, cover any better than really the, the academic level paints. There probably are some circumstances where these would be uh, better to use, but um, I wouldn't recommend a beginner buy any of these type of paints. And I have a video which I'll uh, show above that has um, a comparison I did with the academic, the artist, and the professional level um, paints. So now that we have our paints, we've talked a little bit about the different types of paints. The next thing we want to talk about is the paint containers. There are lots of different things, things to use as your paint containers. Um, little plastic, I like these because they're a little bit thicker, especially to do, um, to do like a dirty pour or something like that. Relatively cheap, uh, disposable. These are little uh, cups that I found. Uh, you actually cook in these, but they were great to put paint in. I let them dry and I just reuse. I'm sure you can see that paint in there. And um, if I want to kind of spread out how the paint looks, I don't want it so um, the, the paint spread out vertically. I want to spread it out horizontally. Those are nice. These come in uh, very handy. You can buy I think I bought a set of these for less than 10 bucks, and there's 12. Um, that way you can have, you can set up your paints, um, get them all mixed, and you can just have them ready for you. And again, just a cheap plastic cup. We can use these to mix our paints, to do dirty pours or whatever, let the paint dry, and it actually just peels right out of that container. So those are very nice to have. Next thing we're going to look, uh, we talked about having water. Uh, I do prefer purified water um, just because I don't want, if there's anything in the culinary water, the water that I use um, out of my sink, I want to make sure that nothing comes in that can grow. Generally, I've, I'm in Salt Lake City. You don't get a lot of things growing because it's not hot and humid around here, but still, I like to use purified water or filtered water from my fridge. Um, the next thing is stirring sticks. There are lots of different types of stirring sticks. I have some big, very big stirring sticks if I'm making a very large, you can see how big that is, a very large painting. There are jumbo that are kind of in between, in between size here. These are the ones I use most often. I actually cut them in half, especially when I'm using these little Dixie cups, because half is kind of the perfect fit and then I, they last a little bit longer. And then um, we had previous the craft sticks that people use. If you don't want something that's disposable, there are, I have seen people use the little rods that they use for coffee and things like that that just have a ball on the end to mix. You can use spoons. The paint, again, when it, when it dries, it'll peel right off a metal spoon or a, uh, most plastic spoons it will peel off. That works just fine. Uh, so the next thing is painting surfaces. There are a lot of different painting surfaces that I have used. Um, uh, 
the most common obviously is the canvas which we'll get to but uh, I have been quite successful with mixed media paper this is a little bit uh, tiny bit too thin. I don't use this very often unless I want to do a bunch of different um, uh, pours. It actually buckles a little bit when you pour or paint on it, so you have to kind of treat it first, let it dry, and then paint over it so you don't get that buckling. Watercolor paper actually works quite well. Um, it's uh, a lot more dense than um, the mixed media paper. Um, you know, I just put this on a a cooling rack, you know, a metal tray, put it on, do my paint pour, and pull it off, and it's, it's a lot cheaper than doing canvases or wood or anything like that. Little wood frames that you can get at the craft store, these work great. Um, because it's wood, you generally want to seal it um, with a gesso or with uh, something else just to make sure, but these, uh, I got this for 50 cents at a thrift store. Same thing, little wood things that I got at the thrift store. I'm going to paint on that, uh, hook the bell up, and then I'll have a little clock tower. I got this at Target. It was in their little section right up front. That's super cheap items. Uh, obviously, this is going to go for my daughter. She wants to paint it, so we're going to do that shortly. Uh, it says $3, but it was on sale for a dollar. Just a piece of board that I had at my house. This works great as long as it's kind of a flat surface. Uh, even if, even though it's dirty, I'll just gesso over the top of that, let it dry, paint right over. Uh, canvases, lots of different sizes of canvas. I have an 8x10, 11x14 uh, I think, and 16x20. Um, lots of different types of canvases. These work great. Um, and I get a lot of those for commissions and different things. And obviously the canvas board that we talked about easier. It's just a, you know, it's got hard cardboard in and the canvas, uh, canvas is stretched over the cardboard. So here is the drop cloth that I used. I had this uh, in the beginner's item. I just buy these in bulk. Uh, it's much cheaper that way. These are 9 feet by 12 feet. Um, and I actually, um, I take these, I cut them to the width that I want. And then that gives me this width by nine feet. And sometimes I cut them even in half and I tape them down to my table. Works very well. I have had this pack for, I don't know, it's probably six months and I haven't even used a full, a full roll yet. Very nice to have. Last but not least is gesso. Um, you want gesso to cover things like wood uh, to give it a nice surface to adhere to. It's kind of a little grainy surface and the paint actually sticks to it quite well uh, with that. Most of the canvases that you have are pre-gessoed. These are pre-gessoed, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, sometimes if I'm painting black on this, I will tint my gesso black, paint it over, let it dry, and then do my dark pour on top. That way I don't get any of the white um, canvas there. But gesso is very nice to have. Um, it's relatively cheap, and usually I buy it in bulk because I use a lot of it. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, pouring mediums. For the beginner, I'd recommend these two items. Elmer's Glue All um, and Flood Floatrol. I get this at Home Depot at Lowe's. It's right next to the uh, spray guns. This is a paint conditioner. Um, it actually works quite well as a pouring medium. Um, this thing, I think, costs around $15 a gallon. Same thing for the Elmer's Glue All. I get both of these at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, I tend not to use the clear glue or the school glue because water, it cleans up with water. The school glue cleans up with water even after it's dry. This does also, but you really have to work at it. So these are the things that I'd recommend for a beginner. Uh, relatively easy to get, at least in the United States. Um, at some point, I want to do a video about where to get this in the different other countries, but in the United States, these are pretty easy to get. I use Flood a lot if I want to get little cells, the Glue All if I don't want to get cells, just because of how they react. Some other things I have used before that work fine. Uh, Liquitex has some pouring mediums. This is a gloss medium and varnish. I actually use it for both varnishing and uh, pouring medium. Mod Podge, same thing. I've used it for a varnish and for a pouring medium, and they work well. The problem with these is they're very expensive compared to the other items. 
So I don't use them a lot as a pouring medium. Sometimes I add in either of these if I want my paint to be a little more glossy because the glue all and especially the flood are kind of a matte finish. The glue all is kind of a semi-gloss satin type finish. Uh, the next thing are what I call props. You know, it's just different things that you use to um, to make changes to your acrylic pours. Um, so one thing, if you're going to do a swipe, this is just a, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's the thicker version of the paper that you put over and it put it through a heat machine and it um, laminates your paper. You know, it's a laminate sheet. And I just, uh, we put this through the laminator just so it adhered the two sheets together. And this works great to do um, swipes and things like that. I just have a cheap $1 um, spreader that they use for for um, putting mud on walls and things like that. I also use that for swipes or to put a base layer of paint to kind of move it all around. Um, this is a baking utensil. It, again, easy tool to spread things around. I got a set of three of these for I think six bucks. This is the medium one. I have a larger one and a small one. Uh, it has been very handy. A palette knife, um, if you've painted with other things, I, I am not a painter in general. I took up acrylic paint pouring because it was something that I could do as a, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a, uh, it's called left brain artist because I, I like math, I like computers, I like uh, science, things that I can be very um, specific with. So I haven't used this a lot before, but it is very nice, for example, if I do a painting, and I want to give it a little, uh, I want to do a little swipe somewhere, I want to push the paint around a little bit, this tool is very handy for that. This is to uh, adjust grout and mud. Both of these tools, you know, they have little tiny teeth here and a bigger teeth here. I've used these for lots of different things. Um, I've used them to move paint around, it's actually quite, quite nice to do that, to give a little texture to my painting. Um, I actually had this because I painted apartments for a lot of years. So, um, those are fun to have. Just uh, again, I call these props. This is the bottom of a pop bottle, you know, a 7 up bottle or something. I took it to an iron to kind of flatten it out, but this is where you can do a pop, a bottle pour. And I have a larger version of that here from a 2 liter bottle. Got a couple of those here. So you can pour on the paint, have it come out. Same thing. Uh, this, this is just a little cut that I got. Um, and I just put it down and then it makes more of a, you know, it's got little ridges on it, so it kind of makes more of a flowery looking circular item. And then a strainer. I got these strainers super cheap. Um, you can pour the paint in and do a strainer pour with these. Uh, I have really enjoyed doing strainer pours. For a torch, um, I just got a cheap one off of, um, a cheap butane torch off of Amazon. Um, this one just has a little sit, uh, dial to open. It has a little safety lock. This starts it, and then I can just put the um, tank of paint here, turn it upside down, and it will fill itself. Very cheap. I've only had one, uh, one canister of butane, and I've used it for over a year now. So, very easy to do. Uh, the next thing is uh, additives. I'm sure you've heard lots of people using um, treadmill oil. This is 100% uh, silicone treadmill oil. Uh, rubbing alcohol sometimes gets used to, um, this is only 70%, recommend you use the 91%. This has uh, too much water. Um, silicone oil liquid wrench, again, this is, has um, silicone in it, uh, along with a little bit of alcohol to make it come out. It just has a spray bottle that I can spray out. And then uh, Flow-Aid. I use this occasionally if I want, especially in paints like the swipe color in a paint to make this a little bit, to break the surface tension so that it doesn't ball up together after my swipe, um, that it kind of breaks open into big circular cells on, on swipes and things like this. This was kind of expensive, but you only use a, a a couple of drops total, so this has lasted me a couple of years, and it's only about 
uh, two thirds of the way done. So I do really like that. Finishes. Uh, my favorite right now is the polycrylic. It's very cheap, um, easy to use. It. it uh, I just actually did a couple of paintings here that I put a polyacrylic finish on. You can see the shine with my lights there. And that is uh, two coats of polyacrylic that made this nice little shine. And that's only like, um, what is it here? Uh, probably two teaspoons total of polyacrylic that did that. So that's a very nice item to use. Uh, I've also used the general purpose high gloss varnish from Windsor & Newton. This is, a lot of artists use this on their canvases, um, just spray over. Um, these, like I mentioned before, this is actually a medium and a varnish. You can use that with liquid Tex. Mod Podge also you can use as a varnish. Sometimes you need to put a little bit of water in it to make it a little more malleable. Um, and then put that over the canvas very thin. If you put too much water uh, in this and you put it on your canvas it will actually crackle and, and crack. You'll get crazing and uh, things in your paint. So there's some of the common finishes that uh, get used. So those are the uh, a bunch of the tools that I've used. Now uh, really quickly I want to talk about some of the bonus items that I recommend people have. So I have taken a bunch of these hooks. They're just cheap hooks. And I actually uh, put these hooks into the wood of my painting on the four corners. And then I can just, to level the painting, I can put it on, put my level on. And then if this side's too high, I just unscrew it a tiny bit. If your table isn't level, this is an easy way to make a level painting. Just buy a bunch of these. I just have probably 30 of these that I just keep. Uh, the paint peels right off when it's done, but it's an easy way to keep level a level painting. So the next bonus one that I have started using the last couple of weeks is this is a medicine. Um, like the little kids, I, this actual one isn't a medicine one. I got this on, on YouTube. It's got a kind of a, a wide end on the end. But one thing I like to do with this is with my polycrylic, I don't like getting stuff around here because then the lid doesn't seal and I have problems. Um, some people put this in another bigger container that just has a normal lid, like an ice cream container. That works too. But I found I can actually pull out and say, you know what, I want a teaspoon, two teaspoons. I can pull it straight out of here, put it on my canvas, and go. And it makes everything so much cleaner and so much easier. Um, again... I'm left-brained, and I want to be able to say, you know what, this particular one here, I'm going to need a teaspoon of polycrylic each layer, so I can come in, pull out exactly a teaspoon, spread it all out, spread it out with my, you know, whatever I decide to, to do it with the paintbrush, and do the exact same thing on the next layer, and it's very direct, you know, it's, I have all the measurements, I don't wing it, I'm not the type of guy that wings it. Um, with my pouring and, and that's how I can recreate some of this stuff that I've done. So that's another bonus tip that I have there. Um, one thing I recommend everyone has is a little pair of tweezers. Ultimately you're going to get stuff in your paint. It's going to be hairs, it's going to be little dried pieces of paint, or maybe you're pouring in your, your uh, glue and some of the the dried paint from the end happens. This is such a nice tool to have to just pick it out super easy, move things around. With the very small edge, you're not uh, disturbing the paint very much and makes everything a whole lot easier. Last but not least is a scale. This is just a um, home cooking scale that I purchased. Um, it does ounces and uh, grams. I use the grams because you know, 30, 30 grams or so is an ounce, and it's just easier to get smaller values. Again, something very important for me is I want to be able to recreate what I've done. And the consistency of the paint as you mixed it is probably the number one uh, thing that changes between paintings. So, 
if I weigh my paint, I weigh my pouring medium, I weigh the water I put in, I do that the same every single time, then my paintings come out identical. Uh, I shouldn't say identical because every painting is different, but the uh, I can rule out not using the exact same amount of paint. How the paint mixes is obviously something um, that I can't control, but this way I make sure that my paints are the same consistency, um, that they're not too runny, not too thick, or I can change the runniness and thickness based on what I put in. Um, and I keep track of that in a, I just have a little binder, you know, this has my notes, but I keep track of this type of thing in a little binder that says, okay, here's what I use for this painting, here's the colors, um, here's the amount of pouring medium, and that way I can keep track of what I'm doing and figure out how to recreate those things um, in the future. So that is today's episode. Again, if you this is the type of content that you like, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the bell icon to get notified when the next version comes out. Like this video, and next week we will be talking about uh, pouring mediums and how to mix paint. Have a good day, guys, and we will see you next week.